God declares that he will not permit corruption to bring you down. Corruption is on its way out, while purity is on its way in. Today is the day that I have cleansed you. By the word that I have spoken to you, you are free from any impurities. You are going to have to come up here to me, and in doing so, you will find the seat that has your place card in front of it. I mention this once more because I am not going to come down there to you. There is now a ready banquet. Angels are anticipating the moment when they will pour in the oil and wine of my goodness, which has the power to transform any circumstance. What you are experiencing right now is paradise brought down to earth in your heart and in your circumstances, says God. All you need to do is roll over on your back and allow the river of my blessing to carry you wherever it will. In today's message, the Father tells you that you have successfully navigated across the turbulent seas and are now entering the land of your promise. This has been the most difficult struggle you have faced up to this point, but I have provided you with sufficient tenacity to deal with challenging circumstances and emerge victorious. God declares that you are victorious regardless of the circumstances. Keeping this in mind should be your mindset, therefore, you should not let brief setbacks cause you to get afraid and transform you into a victim of war. I have not bestowed upon you the spirit of fear, but rather the spirit of power, love, and a clear-headed mind. The Father encourages you to have self-assurance and to be aware of the fact that, despite the circumstances that are always shifting in your life, you are a winner, a victor, and more than a conqueror. Despite the fact that the night season is coming to an end, as well as the chapter of uncertainty and difficulties, it is also proclaiming the beginning of a new day and the dawn era for you. You should make it a top priority to make this transition from the night into the twilight of the day and everything that accompanying it signifies. Despite the fact that the night is at its darkest, you are still on the right path. This is because in the kingdom, it is night before day and the darkest hour is always the period before dawn. Your morning is breaking into the place where abundant blessings, growth, and repair are taking place. This healing will be carried out in such a way that there will be no scars left behind by the arrows that flew at you during the day or the pestilence that roamed around during the night. According to the Father, the worst of times are behind you, and the finest days are just around the corner. Therefore, rejoice, give thanks, and get ready to celebrate. The Father has stated that he is more interested in relationships than he is in real estate investments at this time. The fact that you are aware that you have been ordained to take territory in my kingdom has caused you to question, Father, when are these things going to happen? I say to you that he who rules his own heart is better than he who takes a city. There is no possibility of achieving success on the outside without first achieving victory on the inside. In the same way that the interior territory of a willful heart is defeated and brought to the foot of the cross, the opposition that is on the outside will fall at your feet, groveling for mercy and seeking escape from my unrestricted goodness that wraps you in a glory that is brighter than the sun. I am not going to give you a lot of things that are not related to Christ, declares the Father. I have already given you the Son, what further gift could I possibly withhold from you? Providing for. Is it healing? The breakthrough. It belongs to you. Could you perhaps explain why you are not walking in the light of conquest that I have shown upon you? You have to realize that the things that I have previously said to you in your life are far more powerful and accessible than the things that you are waiting for me to speak on a second occasion. I don't think you need any additional words, you just need to make the most of the one you already have. In that moment, the adversary will be vanquished, and the blessing will arrive, 
along with fresh instructions for the chapters and pages of your life that have not yet been written. I am the one who is in charge of the processes that occur in your life, the Father says today. Rather of praying for the process itself, you should start praying for the outcome. It is up to me to figure out how I will get things done, it is not up to you. Most of the time, your prayers are unsuccessful because they are a reflection of how you believe I will act, rather than just trusting me to determine the outcome. Let me handle the particulars, declares the Supreme Being. On the other hand, Moses had no idea how I would bring him across the Red Sea. Elijah was taken aback by the manner in which I presented him on multiple occasions. Gideon was fully unaware of the strategy that I would use to destroy the Midianites, as he only had 300 warriors under his command at the time. When all they needed to do was leave the details to me, it would have been a waste of time for them to lie awake conspiring to ask me to do this and that. All they needed to do was forget about it. Put an end to prayer about how you believe I will manage the things that are happening in your life. The Israelites perished in the wilderness because they were unable to take their eyes off the process and allowed me to handle the specifics of the situation. Instead, choose to pray for the outcome, and you will find that your serenity is increased, and you will be able to take pleasure in the journey rather than being tormented by unwarranted anxiety and concern. It is the Father who says, I have this. Relax and take pleasure in the journey. Could it be that I have not mentioned that the Father says, the problems of life come from the heart? Take precautions to protect your heart from the hurtful. In order to protect oneself from the circumstance, the people, and the environment that consistently exude the negative, defeatist attitudes of unbelief, you need construct a wall of opposition between yourself and these elements. As a result of the fact that the adversary of your hopes has packed the unfavorable in such an alluring manner, the gloom quietly strolls in without even a knock on the door. It is time to make a request to have your key returned to you. According to the Father, whatever abundantly settles in your heart will be generated in your life for you to experience. It is in this manner that I built the human heart to function in your favor rather than in opposition to you. Your heart will be filled with things that are pure, and with time, the pure will take over the impure things that exist in your life. If you allow yourself to be filled with things that are wonderful, then pleasant things will find their way to your front porch each and every morning. If you fill your heart with the things that would make a good report, then the good report will find its way to your back door. Once you have filled your heart with the things that come from virtue, my virtue will radiate forth from my throne and cure your land. Are you unable to find any praise or any fact that is positive and pleasurable to occupy your thoughts on this particular day? According to the Father, if you give these things some thought today, they will serve as the indicators of what your future holds. Today, the Father encourages you to put your faith in the positive report rather than the bad message that is permeating the environment around you. Sometimes the prophets will talk in a manner that is in opposition to one another, says the Father. The first person will foretell a day filled with gloom and darkness, while the second person will foretell the morning spread across the mountains. They are both correct depending on the direction in which your affections will go. According to the Father, if you focus your affections on me, you will never be moved. During this particular season, the character of your life is determined by the things that you hold to and the things that you are prepared to give up in order to submit to my will. The question, what can a man take from you that I cannot replace, should be kept in mind at all times. What is it that man might threaten that I am unable to restore with a single display of heavenly grace? 
Do not be sad when the prophets foretell that there will be a loss in the near future, says the Father, for there is nothing concealed inside me that will be touched by the things that are going to be brought upon the earth. Your entire life, including everything you own, belongs to me. You may count on me to ensure your well-being. When other people see the resources and provisions that you have, they will question, how is it possible that this is happening? The solution to your question is that you should present them to a loving father who is concerned about even the smallest sparrow that falls from the branch. In today's message, the father declares, my word makes signs manifest through sound and light. The amount of light that you are able to walk in is directly proportional to the sound that you let out. When you realize that your sins have been washed away and forgiven, and that the price has been paid for your liberation and liberty, then you will be able to walk in the light as I am in the light, and you will also be able to have communion with one another. In addition to being God-given, God-breathed, and God-ordained for you and everyone else who would believe, these are not restricted to any particular person or group of people whatsoever. My glory will be exhibited in your life to the extent that you accept, pursue, and comprehend this. This is the degree at which you can anticipate seeing my glory manifest in your life. You have to act in the same manner that I do if you want to have what I have. When you do what I say, you will see that I am a God who does what I do. You now have the upper hand in this situation. I am not concerned with what I am able to do or what I am willing to do, rather, it is about the extent to which your faith will allow you to believe in something that is beyond what you can see or experience by your senses. Because I am not constrained in any manner, I am able to move in any way that I choose. Your capacity to believe is the one limitation that prevents, distracts, or hinders you from becoming successful. The task appears to be too simple, but if it were simple, everyone would be doing it. Is it possible that the Son of Man will find confidence in the world when he arrives? There is a greater amount of faith in the world today than at any other time in history. This is not only due to the fact that there are more people who are walking by faith, but also because there is a generation and multiplied generations that have learned how to purposefully use their faith, increase their faith, and have faith-filled results manifesting in their lives. There is a secret that many people disregard as being false or a mistake, yet the reality of it will play out in their life as well but not with the outcome that they had hoped for. Because I have wonderful plans for you, you can put your trust in the hope of glory that is bringing that to pass right now in your life and in the lives of others with whom you have to do things. Today, the Father says, I am opening the floodgates of heaven for the rain and the dew to fall upon you and take over your soul. This is a message directed toward you. You will be transformed, revitalized, and healed from the wounds that you have sustained as a result of the darkness seasons and the battle. According to God, all of this is a component of the recovery, rehabilitation, and restoration that you have been promised. The rain and dew are a result of the fact that the seasons of refreshing have arrived. It is time to enjoy and be celebrated since this is a sign that the transition seasons that you have been experiencing are coming to an end. As my promises in your life and destiny are realized, the Father states that you will be showered with numerous opportunities to receive blessings, which will serve to validate the new season. In spite of the fact that your rehabilitation and restoration will take place in stages, you should anticipate that your recuperation will take place immediately and get you ready for everything that is new. You have been promoted thanks to the fact that it is a new season. Not only have you elevated your standing inside the spirit, but you have also built the authority that is associated with it. 
At the same time that you are accepting your new position as a high-ranking member of the kingdom, God encourages you to renew your thoughts. Raise yourself up to the occasion by shaking off any comfort zones and coping techniques that you may have developed during the night. In order to assist you in establishing yourself in this elevated position, I have dedicated angels to your service. You will not fail or falter, but you will succeed in pushing fresh efforts to gain souls, set the prisoners free, and carry the kingdom ahead, says the Father. You will not fail or falter. Today, the Father says that the tension is beginning to lighten, and joy is on its way. There have been times you are so excited to accomplish something in my kingdom that your attitude is merely, Lord, I'm going to do something, if I do it wrong. For your sake, I deplore the adventures of arrogance, but for my sake, I cannot wait to come to your rescue. Therefore, do not hesitate to inquire, says the Father. You are unable to let me down, and I will not become angry with you. In spite of the fact that you have made a significant error, there are moments when the full extent of my grace in your life is utilized to make you successful. This causes the religious population to feel a great deal of frustration whenever they see me doing it. According to the Father, I will continue to love you regardless, and there is nothing that they can do to change this. Can you comprehend the precarious nature of the impediment that stands in front of you? It is important that you are aware of how powerful you are and how passionately I stand by your side. I am curious as to the exact number of angels that have been entrusted with the responsibility of fighting and ministering on your behalf till captivity is held captive on your behalf. The heavens have an enormous amount of resources that are reserved for you. Are you aware that you are in possession of the requisition paperwork that will transport paradise to earth? Since you have already brought heaven into existence, what is holding you back now? This is something that you are capable of doing, says the Father. You have the ability to put an end to the slaughter caused by the sword, to break through the impenetrable barrier, and to destroy the barrier that the adversary has set up in front of you. The opposition is playing a game of smoke and mirrors, regardless of the situation. Because of the cross, the adversary is unable to overcome even a single significant obstacle that he has placed in your path because it simply blasts them all out of the way. The Father has revealed to us today that new connections and collaborations are on the horizon in my kingdom, as well as new relationships. There is someone who has been a part of your life on multiple occasions but has been ignored since no one takes them seriously. In the event that everyone else has departed, it is precisely that somebody who will remain your steadfast buddy. At this same moment, as I am speaking to you, I am also speaking to these partners of the kingdom. You are aware of what I am expressing to them, right? This is what the Father has to say, it is not good to be alone. According to the Father, there are occasions when you find yourself in a situation that is not essential. Have you ever thought about Peter when he drowned in the water? When people observe that story, the only thing that comes to their minds is Peter walking on the sea. When I think back on it, I recall reaching down into the brine and wrapping my arms around him. I will never forget the aroma of fish and the anxiety that was all over his body, as well as his frantic cries of, Master, I perish. At that very moment, I felt more proud of him than I ever had before. The lesson that Peter took away from this experience was to structure his questions with more care. After he had vaulted over the rail and walked on the water, he asked me a question to which there was only one answer, Master, if it's you, bid me come. Since it was me after all, I requested that he come to me, knowing that he would immediately find himself in a predicament that was not required. 
The Father has revealed to you today that as long as you remain linked to me, there is no potential of you experiencing failure in your life. Please allow your heart to be connected to me in a way that is alive and well today, moment by moment. In an effort to get your attention, the dangers of the situation and the tests will strive to capture it. Declare to yourself, I only have eyes for you, Lord. The things that threaten you and the storms that are gathering will eventually pass, and you and I will be the only ones left standing. The Father assures you that you will discover solace and relaxation when you are at my breast. Amidst the challenges of life, I am your source of solace. I am aware of the anguish and of the agony. You are able to conceal it so effectively at times that no other spectator on earth would ever be able to comprehend the anguish of heart that you are experiencing. I am aware, the Father affirms. I know your heart, and I tell you today that the groaning and sorrow that you have been experiencing will soon disappear. As I come through for you in the very areas of life that you have scarcely dared to ask of me, they will be replaced with exuberant worship and exalted acclaim. I will come through for you. The Father encourages you to find solace. At this very moment, I am enfolding myself in you with all the love and consistency that a dedicated Father would ever have. When it comes to finding comfort in me, you are never too old to rely on me. According to the Father, it is not very good to be by oneself. You have had situations in which you were surrounded by people who wished you well, but you felt absolutely abandoned. Even throughout those times, I have said in your soul, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. However, even during those moments, there was a need to see someone in the eye and know that they were standing with you no matter what. My children have given in to this particular bombardment of hell more than they have to any other similar assault. The adversary is aware that nothing will be able to stop you from achieving your goals when you are united on earth with one heart and one soul. This includes the complete destruction of his kingdom of darkness. The Father assures you that you will not be by yourself. I am putting in place those individuals who will be in agreement with you on your vision, as well as the desires and the pain that you feel in your heart. As the Father says, they will be to you as David and Jonathan were to him, and I will pour in the oil of selflessness that will secure that bond when the cost becomes tremendous, they are already on their way to you at this very moment. In this day and age, the Father desires for you to establish a deeper level of trust in what I am doing in your circumstances. As the Father says, have faith in me. The time has come to act. Now is the time to act. Remove the prize from the hands of the adversary and take possession of the spoils. Even in this time of trying circumstances, I am with you and in you, and I am making my strength to be your grandeur. According to the Father, I am the God who has never planted anything multiple times in a row. In your life, there are things that you anticipated would occur sooner but would actually occur at a later occasion. You may have anticipated that certain things would occur at a later time, but they will do so sooner. Because nobody has ever been there before, there is no map that can be used to find the location that I am taking you to. No map exists, the only thing that exists are the coordinates of one's familiarity with me. I am going to take you deeper into me as you continue to chart the intimacy. According to the Father, my deep is calling out to your deep. While you are reading the stories of people who have gone before you and being so enthralled by their exploits, I want you to know that they are not the frame of reference for where I am going you. There is a distinct testimony that is specific to each generation. 
Within you lies the potential to act as a catalyst for change, and you are bringing this opportunity with you. You are currently in possession of a chance to establish a benchmark for the outpouring of my kingdom over the next 10 years. This opportunity is being presented to you right now. Hear the sound of my voice. Do what I instruct you to do, and go to the location that I tell you to go. I did not impose any restrictions on what was feasible, such limitations were imposed by people who have not yet entered the room and will not permit anyone else to do so. According to the Father, I am about to shake them very much. The people who are pessimistic and pessimistic about the future are going to become more strident as a result of my shaking them. The sky is not falling, the kingdom is coming. They will cry out, the sky is falling, yet the sky is not falling. When you draw yourself away with me, listen to my voice, and respond in a hasty and obedient manner, you will have the opportunity to take part in this process. In this day and age, the Father wishes for you to receive my warmth and my approval. You are currently receiving the warm approval of heaven on this day. You are going to have days like this one in which heaven will look down on you with favor. It is one of those days right now. There are going to be circumstances in which the kiss of heaven will cause your brow to get wet. It is one of those days right now. I have an irrational level of affection for you, and I do not give much thought to the things that other people are grumbling about. The fact that they were never treated so well is something that they are muttering and bemoaning. I am causing them to feel envious of the goodness that I am bestowing upon you even at this very now. I tell you that the praise of the Son is stuck to your shoulder, says the Father. Your presence is acknowledged by the salute of the Father even on this day. It is my approval that is wanting to take up residence upon your life and the approval of the kingdom is currently visiting you within you. Inquire with me, says the Father. If you ask me, I will not only give you half of my kingdom, rather, I will bestow upon you a fullness and portion of my kingdom that will define and command the destruction of the works of darkness that are directed against you throughout this season. You are not on probation for a period of ninety days, the Father replies. When it comes to the new assignment that I have given you, I am not going to sit back and wait to see how you will perform. You are surrounded by the entirety of heaven, and I will not abandon or abandon you in any way. I am not going to stop providing you with support, and I am not going to stop holding you accountable for the things that you have worked so hard to achieve. Permit all of your hesitation and insecurity to be lifted off of you and removed. I am now working to repair the spirit sickness of timidity that you are experiencing in your life at this precise moment. You already know me, and I will continue to learn more about you. You are being called to your deep by my deep. My voice is beginning to reverberate within you. When the cries of your heart are in harmony with the music that I make in the heavens, the walls of opposition and resistance that are present in your life will crumble before your own eyes. There is a message from the Father that says, I am with you and I will never leave you or forsake you. You have inquired about the manner in which one should wait upon the Lord, and I am prepared to provide an answer to that inquiry today. Rather than being a state of rest or passivity, waiting upon the Lord is more about the things that you do not do and the reasons behind those actions. At this moment, the adversary is hoping to elicit a response from you. If you are wiggling in his hands, then and only then will the adversary be able to determine that you are still in his control. The privilege should not be granted to him. Learn to laugh the laugh of faith no matter what storms of emotion and turbulence overwhelm you in your current situation. This is something you should always remember. 
Please keep in mind the evidence that my word has given, which states, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Father tells you that you are not in control of the situation that you are looking at today. You are seated with me in heavenly regions, which are located a great distance above all kinds of evil activities. Discover how to live and how to deal with the challenges that life throws at you without responding. Your words and behavior should not be a reaction to the situation. Be patient and wait for me. You must wait for my permission to speak. I will give you permission to take action. After then, I will enter the scene through your actions and words, and I will destroy the plans that the adversary has devised against you. The Father declares that you are a victorious individual today. Now, get up and triumph over it. Please come before the throne and receive your instructions for the new season, as the Father has instructed you earlier today. Elevate yourself into my presence with praise and adoration, and I will reveal to you the great and powerful things that are going to take place. God says, I have the blueprint, and I want to present it to you because it is your time and your turn. Therefore, I want to give it to you. This news is being made in the realms of the Spirit by angels who are performing with trumpets. Your revealing and manifestation as a child who has reached the age of maturity and is prepared to receive your inheritance and portion of the kingdom is taking place through the announcement. This is of the utmost importance, and because of your one-of-a-kind assignments that only you are formed and fashioned to accomplish, says the Father. You are an exceptional individual. As I open new doors, no man will ever be able to close them. I am forming alliances within the kingdom and bringing your tribe to you from the other side. In addition to this, I am making it possible for you to flourish and flourish even further in this new golden era by providing you with options and possibilities. For your clear passage into everything that has been promised and spoken about about you since the beginning of time and from the very foundations of the planet, the years of survival are coming to an end, and the walls of limitations are falling down. Come to me, my beloved, and let us collaborate on this endeavor. You are the offspring in whom all of creation is waiting for your uncovering and manifestation, says the Father. The wait is finished, and you cannot hide any longer because you are the offspring being addressed. Today, the Father tells us that we need not look any further because the answer is waiting for us within ourselves. You are able to take up your genuine nature of sonship in a manner that is obedient and authoritative over the things that have come against you when you let go of the reins of self-referential and selfish ambition. As a result of having accomplished everything, you are now standing in the liberty that Christ has bestowed upon you, which means that you are no longer required to be governed or involved in the problems of this world. Although you are present in the world, you are not a part of it. The weapons that you possess are powerful enough to bring down strongholds and to release my word in the earth. Allow my will to be carried forth in your sphere of influence by allowing the river to flow from inside you with no resistance. As you carry out the mission that has been assigned to you, you will find yourself at the right place at the right time with the right people. This is pure and utter satisfaction. It is a huge gain to combine godliness with contentment. It is through trust and patience that you will be able to inherit the promises that you have made as a good soldier who endures hardship. In order to become a hero, you will have to persevere through a number of challenges. You are going to be successful if you do not give up. As a result of your generosity, the doors of heaven have been opened onto your life, the devourer has been reprimanded for your sake, and the time has come for an abundance of gifts that cannot be contained to be poured out into your life until they are overflowing. I am going to come to your aid and reward you for your faithfulness. 
Your longing for these days has finally come to an end. Be mindful of the fact that my light shines in a dark area, and the darkness is unable to perceive it, even if they might not look the way you anticipated them to. As a demonstration of my fidelity, my light is shining through you through this very moment. In this day, the Father says, Enter my gates with thanksgiving and my courts with praise. You can declare that this is the day that the Lord has made, and you can celebrate because I have given you joy and peace in believing so that you will have an abundance of hope. My hope is not let down since the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals my love to you and spreads it throughout your emotions. For the sake of my name, he is here within you to serve as your advocate, counselor, and intercessor. He also directs and guides you in all truth and righteousness on your behalf. I have a strong desire to bring improvement to you in all aspect of your life. My word is doing a tremendous amount of work in you, and it is bringing up opportunities that are favorable to you. Your petitions have been heard by me, and the scales are beginning to tip in your favor. I am trying something new, and I am going to let you know about it right now before I actually do it. On this day, I am weaving a path through the wilderness for you, and I am creating streams in the desert. It is no longer going to be the case that you are relegated to the periphery of what is taking place on the basis of the lies that the adversary has spread, rather, you are being elevated to the position of my royal priesthood, as my people, going forth in my name, and carrying out my will in the environment. The eyes of people around you will be able to see my light streaming through you because a convergence of illumination is breaking out. This illumination is giving revelation and insight from united, faith-filled prayers on a spiritual level, and it is also bringing healing and visual evidence on a physical level. A great number of people will be drawn to the magnificence of my rising in you. Despite the fact that you have experienced feelings of abandonment and hatred, I am freeing you from the conflict that bad persons and tongues have brought upon you. I will make you an enduring success, a source of happiness for many generations to come. On this day, the Father declares, Just as I have loved Jesus, so have I loved you, and this love is one that will last forever. Not because of your own righteousness, but because Jesus suffered your sins in his own body on the cross, so that you would be dead to sin but alive to righteousness, you are worthy of my love and everything that heaven has to offer. This is not because of your own righteousness. You are healed and seated with me in heavenly regions because you have faith in his name. There is no other way. Do of your royal heritage and the inheritance that is now yours, you are functioning from a position of authority and dominion in the earth. This is due of their inheritance. The time has come to put your foot firmly on the neck of the damned devil. The thief has been located, and he is compelled to pay seven times the amount, which includes losing his entire home. Right now, you have the ability to appropriate your authority and reclaim what is rightfully yours. Despite the fact that things change with the seasons and that it takes faith and perseverance to inherit the promises, you do not have to wait in order to get what is absolutely legitimately yours. Now, you are receiving it via faith. Although I am not withholding anything from you, I am inclined to treat you with favor throughout the entirety of your life. Despite the fact that it may appear so, you are not an orphan and you are not your own person. You must not waver in your commitment to the confession of your faith because I am steadfast in carrying out what I have promised. You are surrounded by a large cloud of witnesses who are cheering you on from the gallows of heaven. They are getting ready for the unveiling of your true nature that can be discovered in me, which is taking you to higher levels on a spiritual level. 
It will be possible for you to function from a state of tranquility and relaxation, and as a result, you will be able to go through a realm in which nothing is broken or missing in your life, and in which everything you say and do will be as effective as if I had said it or done it. The blessings of my shalom are being bestowed upon your life in larger quantities at this very moment. The Father has revealed to us today that the situation that you are currently going through did not take me by surprise. I am not wringing my hands or pausing before the throne, wondering how I am going to get you out of the situation. I am not doing either of those things. Others around you, including trusted counselors, are going to be shocked to the point that they will be unable to provide you with responses that are appropriate. Within the context of this circumstance, you are going to be required to pay attention to my voice rather than the icy solace of advisors who are both misinformed and uninspired. My role is not limited to that of a comforter, I am also a counselor. Every single step of the way, I will direct you and help you navigate your way through the traps that Satan has set for you. Therefore, according to the Father, come and let us reason together. In the presence of my undivided attention, I invite you to pour out your heart to me. This day, the entire heavens are focused on your predicament and the cries that are coming from your heart. This is not a day to give up hope, rather, it is a day to have faith. This does not mean that I have abandoned you or left you to fend for yourself. Even though you may not always be able to see it, I am working in the middle of the darkness to bring you to the safe haven that you have been searching for. This day, the Father tells you that there are many voices in the earth that are around you. There is only one voice that is genuine, and that is my voice, which communicates with you from the very core of your being. It is my voice that is being heard in the depths of your inner soul, where the acoustics are the most profound. You have been contacted by me. This very moment, I am speaking. I will continue to communicate with you until you do not only comprehend it but also hear the sound of heaven, which is so powerful that it drowns out every other sound that is antagonistic. Step forward, says the Father, since I promised in my word that my voice would be the sound of someone calling over your shoulder and saying, this is the way walk you in it. It is not acceptable for me to respond with a negative answer because my default stance toward you is always yes. The voice that says, you cannot, you will not, you must not, is an illegitimate authority, says the Father, since I am not the deity of limitation or obstacle. Rather, I am the source of breakthrough and transformation for you. Do not believe the voice that says this. So pay attention to my voice, and make sure that your decisions, behaviors, and goals are in line with what I have to say. My words will operate in you, and you will walk out of the phantom of constraint that the enemy has projected as a falsehood against my promise. My words will work in you. On this day, the Father of my unfailing favor and affection declares that you are the target of my attention once again and again. Allow it to be heard, the sound of acceptance, and yes, the sound of approval, my approval that is pushing you to move forward to blessing upon blessing on this day. Currently, the Father is telling you that you are not in the problem, rather, you are in Christ. No more sobbing in the middle of the night. Please, my child, do not continue to fumble around in the dark. On this day, I am removing the garment of uncertainty and ignorance that has been placed over you. My hand is currently putting an end to the clamor and clatter of challenges, difficulties, and issues that are occurring in your life. In order to bring about my purposes in your life, I am transforming all of your inquiries and uncertainties into declarations and witnesses of my faithfulness. 
My child, the only way to fix the problem is to ascend above the problem. There is no other option. At this stage, you are unable to find a solution to the dilemma that is currently in front of you. Because of this, I have made sure to provide you with an ascension place right here beside me. I have placed you in heavenly realms through your faith in Christ. Instead of adopting the idea of being in the problem, adopt the mindset of being in Christ. As you can see, the Father adds, you have anticipated that I would descend into the situation, but I will not replicate the procedure that you have anticipated. Approximately 2000 years ago, I put myself in your position and paid the whole price for your deliverance. I am setting you in my economy and in my station, and I am positioning you far above every invasion of the enemy in your life. Therefore, lift up your head and change the trajectory of your expectations for I am even this day and this very hour.